So, the most important anthropometric parameters are the weight, the height and the head circumference. So, growth and nutritional status go hand in hand, okay. So, assessment of growth and nutritional status is done by certain anthropometric parameters. Okay. So, the most important anthropometric parameters are the weight, the height and the head circumference, which we will be discussing in detail. Okay. Apart from this, there are some other anthropometric parameters which are used more for the assessment of nutritional status, but also give an idea about the growth. So, other parameters that we need to know are the midarm circumference, okay, the skin fold thickness. the chest circumference and the body mass index. Okay. So, weight, height and head circumference we will be discussing in detail after this, but just a little bit about the other parameters here. So, mid-arm circumference as the name itself is telling us that it is the circumference of the midpoint of the arm. Okay. So, what is the device used by field workers to measure mid-arm circumference? So, device used by health workers to measure Mid-arm circumference is known as Shakir's tape. Okay. So, what is Shakir's tape? So, Shakir's tape is nothing but a measuring tape which has got a few colored zones. So, it is a measuring tape like this which has got a red, yellow and a green zone. Okay. So, Shakir's tape is nothing but a measuring tape which has got a red, yellow and a green zone. So, there is a red zone, okay, a yellow zone and a green zone. Okay. So, if you measure the mid-arm circumference of a child and it falls in the red zone, it usually indicates that it is less than 12.5 centimeters and it is indicative of malnutrition. If it, it falls in the yellow zone, it indicates borderline nutritional status and is usually between 12.5 to 13.5 centimeters. While if it falls in the green zone, then it indicates normal nutritional status that is a mid-arm circumference of more than 13.5 centimeters. So, you know different countries use different cutoffs. Some say malnutrition is less than 11.5, borderline 11.5 to 12.5 and normal more than 12.5. But irrespective of the cutoff that is used in Shakir's tape, what is important for us to remember is if the mid-arm circumference is falling in the red zone, that means the child has malnutrition, we need to take some action quickly. Yellow zone is borderline nutritional status and you need to look into the factors and rectify them immediately so that the child does not land up in malnutrition. 
and green zone if the mid arm circumference is falling in it indicates normal nutritional status so that is shakir's tape Moving on to skin fold thickness. Now, what is the device basically which is used to measure skin fold thickness? So, it is Harpenden calipers. So, these are nothing but like, you know, you must have seen, remember your vernier calipers in your old physics days which you used to measure the thickness of coins and all. So, similar is the Harpenden calipers. Okay, they can be used to measure the skin fold thickness. So, whenever you pinch skin, you also take some amount of subcutaneous tissue along with it. So, this gives you an idea about the subcutaneous fat that is there. So, skin fold thickness, so it is also more of a nu nutritional status indicator and indirectly gives you idea about the growth of the child as well. So, skin fold thickness is measured by Harpenden calipers and previously to know the normative values of skin fold thickness, we used to use Tanner's charts. Okay, used previously, but now we have skin fold thickness charts available in the WHO growth charts. Okay, which we have the percentiles as well as standard deviation. The skin fold thickness is usually measured at certain areas of the body like the triceps area, the biceps area, the suprascapular area and subscapular area. So, these are the usual areas of the body where the skin fold thickness is measured okay what about the chest circumference now you know chest circumference at birth which is more the head circumference or the chest circumference so very very important to remember that the babies usually have a large head and so much so that at birth actually the head circumference is more than the chest circumference but the difference between them should not exceed 3 cm, otherwise it is abnormal, okay. At about 9 months to 1 year, the head circumference will become equal to the chest circumference. And beyond 1 year, the chest circumference should be more than the head circumference. If it is not so, then it indicates malnutrition. So, at birth, head circumference more than chest circumference, 9 months to 1 year, head circumference becomes equal to chest circumference and more than 1 year, the chest circumference is more than head circumference and if it is not so, it indicates malnutrition. What about body mass index? Now, body mass index is a composite indicator that takes into account the weight as well as the height of the child. So, BMI is equal to basically weight in kgs by the square of height in meters. Okay. So, for younger children less than 5 years of age, we usually see weight for height, but for older children, we use body mass index. Now, how do you interpret the body mass index values? Again, you plot the body mass index value on growth chart. Okay. And if the body mass index is more than 85th percentile, it indicates overweight. It indicates that the child is overweight. Okay, so BMI more than 85th percentile indicates that the child is overweight. Okay, BMI more than 95th percentile indicates obesity. Okay, while BMI less than 5th centile indicates underweight. Okay, so these are some cutoffs of body mass index which are often used. Now, what if you measured the weight or height or head circumference of the child? Now, how do you know whether it is normal or less than expected or more than expected? So, what we do is we use something known as growth charts to assess that. Okay, so we need to know a little bit about the growth charts before moving ahead. 